this year especially, it was absolutely no excuses on driver you know, selection. They just went out and got the very best that money can buy, and, and this is the result. As you watch the 10 circulating, just remember again Wayne Taylor, whose sons came through this program, and that's a key word. When I talked to Wayne casually on Wednesday, the first day the garage opened here, you want to make it very clear that while Ricky having left before, Jordan leaving this year for Corvette Racing, he did not build this for them. Yes, they came through. Yes, they developed, and they got top-notch works rides, or close to works rides. That was the goal all along. But as you look at all the faces in the 10 pit, and you realize the lies represented here and the longevity of the employees at Wayne Taylor Racing you can tell yeah he didn't build it for the boys he will go on and continue racing and this organization will continue to be strong and remember what occurred last year away from the racetrack for South African Wayne Taylor for him and Shelley his wife the entire family an enormous honor Wayne was inducted into the South African Hall of Fame not the South African Sports Hall of Fame the South African Hall of Fame. And he went back home. It was an enormous honor. He could not believe that was bestowed upon him. And now he just comes back and does what he does here. America has been home for so long for the Taylors. The boys were born here. And this is what they do. And they do best here at the World Center of Racing. This is their home race. They live about an hour from the racetrack. So it's a special moment once again, potentially, here this afternoon. What I find really telling about the last 24 hours for this team is there has been some drama there have been issues but at no point did you ever see anxiety above and beyond the, you know the kind of basic contained level they never got outside of themselves because they've been doing it for so long every time we would cut down to a picture of Wayne Taylor with the speed penalty or any of the other issues that we saw on track he just knew hey long way to go our car is fast just keep running and uh, this is pretty amazing when you think about it you need that little bit of racing luck though i wouldn't say it was lucky but the timing of that yellow the briscoe get back on that lead lap how pivotal was that they went down a lap by briscoe blowing through that red light and then about five minutes before all of the daytona prototype international would have come in for fuel there was that yellow. Well, and that allowed them to get the way by and get back on the lead lap. Let's face it, the position they're in. Five years ago, you could guarantee you were going to get a yellow. These days, in IMSA racing, especially with the field size, absolutely no guarantees. And that's why we've set a record today in terms of distance covered. It's so much green flag running. While you were busy before, there was a period of more than seven and three quarter hours of green flag running. But not a single lap under yellow, and I've driven about eight hours out <laughs> there. So. It's been, uh, actually it's been fun. I love it because you get in that rhythm. It's, it's, it's very, um, uh, almost like percussion. You know, it just keeps going and going and going. And uh, I really enjoy that. It is physical though. You get out and you're pretty worn out uh, without any yellow flag breaks. But for these prototype drivers, it's a furious pace. It's a cool story. Ben Keating is one of the four drivers in this 52, PR1 Matheson Motorsports, LMP2 prototype. Ben, Simon Trubber, Nick Gould, and Gabrielle Aubrey. Gabrielle's behind the wheel right now. If you're joining us late on the broadcast, Ben Keating, in his mid-40s from Texas, successful businessman and very passionate sports car racer. It's not the first time that he's done it in the history of the Rolex 24, but he drove in two different cars in this race, which you're allowed to do to the letter of the law so long as you satisfy the minimum drive time per class. And he's driving in this LMP2 and GT Daytona. You must do four and a half hours in each class. And this, this Iron Man did it. At one stage this morning, he looked to be in really good shape to certainly win one Rolex. The, they led in LMP2 and they're up in the top five in GTD and then it all started to go a little bit south on them, but still a tremendous performance. You gotta love his passion. And talk about jumping between cars. I mean, jumping out of the LMP2 car and then getting a GTD car doesn't have the downforce, doesn't have the same cornering ability. That is a big transition to adjust to. It is, and he's he's a maniac in terms of preparation. I mean, he is an intense competitor. Spends a lot of time on the simulator with this coach. He does a lot of driving with Jerome Bleak Mullen as well. Very experienced GT racer, and Ben is really 
come on strong the last few years, has had some terrific runs at places like Le Mans, competing in GTD. We've talked about it, the prototype category here with LMP2. He loves it. He's focused and intense, and, and he really just feeds off the challenge of figuring out how to go as fast as possible as we take a look at the class leader here, Lee. Totally different driver lineup for American Elton Julian and his Dragon Speed side. Last year, it was Pastor Maldonado, former F1 driver, Roberto Gonzalez, Sebastian Saavedra, the former IndyCar driver, and Ryan Cullen. This year, it's British driver Ben Hanley, who you'll also see in the NTT IndyCar series, and he hopes to make his second Indy 500 this year, along with Henrik Hedman, American Colin Brown. Colin's headed for his second-class victory here at the 24, and Harrison Newey son of Adrian Newey, renowned Formula One designer. They're on their way to victory lane in five minutes. Back-to-back -back wins for Dragon Speed, just minutes away. Yeah, that's incredible. We had some uh, drivers gone for three in a row to go unbeaten here over 72 hours. Uh, that is some feat, but for this team, they've taken the option away from Ralph and Aishin and Merkel Bordelotti because this Paul Miller racing team has been very, very strong all day long, and it's a very competitive GTD field, as you well know, Townsend. So, for Madison Snow, teaming up with Brian Sellers, once again, the 2018 Driver Champions, it's a good start to their campaign. Very strong lineup. You've got Calvarelli now leading factory Lamborghini driver. There's Paul Miller on the timing stand, and what a run he's had, Lee. And if any of you who are watching who live in the tri-state area and you've seen those enormous billboards for Paul Miller Audi or Paul Miller Porsche, or etc., that's the man. There he is. Very successful automotive dealer. Been around a long time. Absolutely loves this sport. I saw him at about 1.32 o'clock this morning in the paddock. Hasn't got a wink of sleep, and he looked fresh as a daisy. I stopped him. I said, man... At what point do you get tired of this all my stuff? He says, oh, I love this. This is great. We're having a great night. I think he felt, even at the halfway mark, that they had a really good shot. Dave Burns. And guys, if you see some emotion in victory lane here, you wouldn't blame them if they make the final 342 to victory lane. And that's because they have not won here. That's right, Paul Miller Racing, the championship team from a couple of years ago. No wins at Daytona. Brian Sellers, not a win here at uh, Madison Snow. No wins here. Yeah, I mean, they won Sebring. They broke Petit Le Mans. But the Rolex has eluded them today. It's almost a really big day. Glad you brought that up, Dave, because Brian Sellers, I think 13 previous starts here at Daytona without a win. So that's going to feel terrific for Sellers, who's been so successful at so many other tracks, champion in this category. And he's been in some good rides over the years. Yes, Just he has. hasn't gone his way. Yeah, and you need that little bit of racing luck, but the car's been strong. Great team, as you mentioned, Tans, and that lineup is uh, tough to beat. For this man, Jesse Crone, the Finn. Flashing his headlights, just trying to clear the traffic with under three minutes to go. What a great performance this team has put together here. You see that plaid design on the Porsche there for FAF Motorsports. That car, that team started so strong, and you would have said they were the favorites in GTD, your class town. No question. From practice one, we pointed to that number nine FAF Porsche and said that's the car. I mean, Porsche's been strong all day. Ironically, you don't see a Porsche in the top three in GTD. It's number 16 right now that's carrying the flag, but the nine car really has been the front runner of the bunch, and they, they had some unfortunate issues. Kamui Kobayashi has been told by the team when you come around next time through the tri-oval here, Whoa. you will see the white flag displayed as he goes by the... GT Le Mans leader, Jesse Crone. And that was close. Yeah, you know, in the top of the team, I'm Wayne Taylor. I said it earlier, he didn't seem to be particularly anxious at any moment. But, man, I don't know if it's our NBC cameras on board there or what, but that looked like maybe six inches to the BMW. All he needs to do is run out of gas or have some technical issue and check up, and that's going to really put some serious damage on the diffuser of that Cadillac. I want to share a story with you from yesterday morning. Calvin and I grabbed Wayne Taylor. Before, long before the race started and said, tell us about your second year with Kobayashi. And this big grin came across Wayne's face. He said, I'll tell, let me tell you about this guy. He's quiet but funny when he wants to be. He's low fuss, low maintenance, but boy, when he gets behind the wheel of this car, look out. And he said, I'm not taking anything away from my other three drivers as he begins his final three and a half miles. He said, but boy, can he hustle this car around this track? He is. It's Rick Seidman. 
and uh, certainly a great fit with this team. And he's about to keep a 100% record as far as his career at the Rolex 24 at Daytona. As for his teammates, Ryan Briscoe has had a couple of class wins here before, but Briscoe is on the verge of his first overall win. For Ringer van der Zander, who did a terrific job like Ryan Briscoe, he's set for his second overall victory, just like Kobayashi, in successive years. And how about one of the most famous racers ever, Scott Dixon, an Indy 500 winner and a five-time IndyCar champion, second only to AJ Foyt in IndyCar racing history. Scott Dixon is about to join the likes of Brian Redman, Derek Bell, Juan Pablo Montoya and Christian Fittipaldi and others as a three-time Rolex 24 overall winner. I love that shot on the final lap. Where else in the world would you find Kabui Kobayashi and Kyle Busch sharing the same piece of asphalt? Daytona 24, there's no place else like it. And that's why it's called Daytona International Speedway. That's what Bill Francenia wanted. Coming through NASCAR 3 and 4 for the final time. Yes, he has done it again. Wayne Taylor's done it again. His drivers have done it again. And Cadillac's done it again. Kamui Kobayashi and Wayne Taylor Racing win the Rolex 24 at Daytona for 2020. There's the man behind the name. He's done it. And so too has Bobby Rahal's guys. Jesse Crone wins GT Le Mans. Sean Edwards, Augusto Farfus and Chaz Mostert. What a quartet they formed. And BMW gets back-to-back -back victories in GTLM. Superb performance. There's Ringer van der Zander. Scott Dixon, Ryan Briscoe, they're all there. Shelly Taylor, Wayne's wife. It is celebration at the Conica Minolta team for yet another overall victory. For Dragon Speed, Elton Julian and his squad. It is back-to-back -back victories. There's a familiar theme running through this year's Rolex 24 in the LMP2 class. The Stars and Stripes, the Evil Knievel themed car. It has done it again. Awesome performance from a completely new driving squad to last year. And one more class left, that is GT Daytona and Paul Miller Racing will do it. A phenomenal performance from Madison Snow, Brian Sellers, Corey Lewis and Andrea Caldarelli brings it across the line for a Lamborghini win.